everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at using the modal controller from Ionic to display and dismiss modals. Uh, but we're going to look at it from the context of web components and specifically using it in a Stencil JS application. So since the release of Ionic 4, uh, Ionic's components have been delivered as web components, but there are some things like the modal controller and also like uh, the alert controller or toast controller where basically we're not just putting some components onto our template. They're sort of created at runtime. And so when we're using things like Angular, we have the Ionic Angular package and we can inject the modal controller into our classes and then we can make use of that to create new modals and display them. And we can use the view controller to dismiss things as well. Uh, but with just pure web components uh, and in Stencil JS, we don't have services like that. We just need to interact with the web components directly. So I think figuring out initially, especially if you do come from an Angular background, uh, figuring out how to use the web components directly to do these things uh, can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and we'll talk through the general approach and how it works. Uh, so as you can see on screen here, I just have a normal looking modal. This is a, a Stencil JS application with uh, Ionic. And we just have a modal. We can launch the modal and we can dismiss it. Uh, so as far as this looks, it just looks like any other Ionic application. But in order to achieve this, what we're doing is we're just using the Ion modal controller web component, not any service uh, imported from anywhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just bring up the Ionic framework docs. I'm just going to quickly show you that this is you know, one of the web components they have available. So if we just search for Ion Modal, uh, you can see here we have Ion Modal and Ion Modal Controller. And so Ion Modal Controller is a web component, which means we can just drop it into our uh, HTML like a normal tag. And that's actually what we need to do in this case to achieve this functionality. So what we do is I'll just bring up the uh, root uh, component here. And so you can see I have the normal sort of Ion Router stuff, Ion App in my root component here. Uh, but what I've done is I've added this Ion Modal Controller web component. So we need to put this somewhere in our application so that we can access this web component. And because it's a web component, it also can provide uh, methods that we can use. And so basically what we're going to need to do is get a reference to this component, this web component that we're adding to our application and then we can call the various methods it provides, which includes creating modals. So in this example, I have an app home page, which is just the default home page, and I've created an uh, app my modal uh, component here that we're gonna use as the modal. And so basically what we need to do is just grab a reference to that ion modal controller uh, component that we added. And we can just do that using a standard document.query selector to grab a reference to that. And so in this case, I've just got this inside of my launch modal uh, method that I'm gonna trigger from the template. Uh, you might prefer to say set up a, something like private modal controller uh, and set up a reference to it on your class as a class member. So you could access it you know, in different uh, functions as well if you wanted to use it in multiple uh, places. Uh, but for this example, we're just gonna uh, set up a const here and set up that reference to the ion modal controller. And now this next line here is technically not always necessary, uh, but what this will do is it's going to wait until the ion modal controller is loaded and ready. So this is kind of like a, a safety thing you can add to make sure that that ion modal controller component is actually loaded. Uh, technically not usually required, but it doesn't hurt to have it in there either. And once we do have that reference to the modal controller, then we can just treat it like a normal service. And if you are used to using Angular, uh, pretty much at this point, it's just like having injected the modal controller and now you can just use it as you please. And so from then on, we're just using the standard modal controller methods. Uh, you can view those in the documentation if you're not too familiar. Uh, but basically what we're doing here is we're just calling the create method on the modal controller. We're supplying it with the component that we want to create the modal from, which is in this case, at my modal. And then we just call the present function. And so I've set up this button down here in the template, which is just calling the launch modal uh, method here. So that when we click on that, it's going to trigger that 
it's going to grab a reference to the modal controller, create the modal, and then call present on that modal, which is what causes it to display on the screen here. And so there is still a little bit more to this story. Uh, obviously, once we launch the modal, we're going to need to be able to dismiss it too. And that involves calling the dismiss, uh, dismiss method. So we need to know, you know, what do we actually call that method on? And so what we're going to do here is if we just inspect this element and we're just going to browse through the uh, DOM here. And you can see over the ion content, ion header of this modal page that we're on. And uh, you can see here, we have this app, my modal. And so that's the component that we use to create the modal. And it's a little bit higher than that. We have the actual ion modal uh, element. And so this is the ion modal web component uh, that was created from the ion modal controller web component. And so you can see that's yeah, that ion modal controller reference is just sitting up here. That'll just stay there throughout the lifetime of the application. And then we have our app uh, app home component, which is we're still inside that page technically because we're in that page and then we've launched a modal on top of it. And then we have that ion modal uh, web component here. So what we need to do at this point, if we want to close this modal, we need to get a reference to this component here that was created. And we could grab it in a similar way where we just use a query selector uh, to grab that modal. Uh, but technically there could perhaps be multiple mod modals present in the application. And so we're gonna do something a little bit better. And what we're going to do is in our modal here, we, uh, we import element from a stencil core and that's going to allow us to gain a reference to uh, the app my modal component. So uh, that's this component right here. So if you weren't using stencil, uh, you would just need to grab a reference to that in some other way, or you might think of some other method to grab this. And then basically what we do with that, once we have a reference to that particular element, the, the host element for the modal, we can just call the closest uh, query selector and we're looking for the closest ion modal. And so what this is going to do is it's sort of going to uh, start at, at my modal and now it's looking for uh, an ion modal component. And so it's gonna come up and search through uh, the sort of DOM here and it's going to find that ion modal. And since it's, it's a parent, it's going to find that first uh, before it would find any other uh, modals that happen to be on the page. And so then all we do once we have that reference, uh, we just call the dismiss method. And that's what we're using to close the modal. And so I've just got a button set up there in the toolbar that's going to trigger this dot close modal. I'm just gonna grab that reference, call dismiss, and then the modal gets dismissed. Uh, but apart from that, everything else is exactly the same. Uh, you can use the same methods that are available on the modal controller. Uh, usually you can pass through uh, props, you can set up the, uh, the on did dismiss um, a handler if you like. So the general functionality of the modal controller and of the other controllers are the same. There's just that slight difference in the way we actually uh, get access to those methods. And so the general idea is to put it, uh, put the controller into your application uh, and then just grab a reference to it using some kind of query selector. And then you can just interact with that reference uh, to call the various uh, methods that are available. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you did like this video, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want, and I'll see you in the next video.